Since I wasn't able to review the Xiaomi Mi 5 in the past, I won't really be able to tell you if the Mi 5S is that much of a better phone or not, but at least now, thanks to TradingShenzhen.com, I can tell you how good of a phone this is and how well it stacks up to the current flagship competition. So let's just check the design and build quality and start off actually with a comparison here with the Samsung Galaxy S7. And yes, you will see it's noticeably taller and even a little bit wider, but due to being very thin and having this very big curve, it actually feels super narrow in the hand which makes one and usability great and makes it one of the most comfortable and most incredible feeling in hand phones and I just have to give it to them it feels extremely premium doesn't bend at all no matter how much you try to bend it due to being aluminum it can be a little bit slippery from time to time but since it is so easy to hold I don't see this to be an issue at all here on the back we have the microphone here we have the camera and the LEDs on the top we have the headphone jack dual sim card tray unfortunately no sd card tray and on the bottom we have the speaker on the right side here we have the microphone and the fake speaker holds along with usb type c on the right side we have the power button in my opinion absolutely perfectly placed easy to reach at least for me along with the volume rocker in easy reach as well both sound and click tactile feedback is great so the only thing that is to be mentioned here is the that it as you can see here, is already on the back curve. So it feels a little bit odd to press actually in the curve, but that's a minor thing. Of course, we have a notification LED. And as you can see here, we have the black border around, even though we have quite, quite small bezels. But this is just something a lot of people don't like so much, but I wanted it to be mentioned. The next thing would be the fingerprint reader. I am personally not that impressed by it because I would just say it's meh. Because as you will probably see here on, on the demo, it works out actually really solid. But since it is a little bit recessed, you just have to press your thumb properly in. And so many times in normal use, it didn't work. So it actually works fast. It actually is good. But it in normal use just didn't feel all that reliable to me. When it comes to the display, 5.15 inches IPS LCD. And yeah. Since it's 1080p, it's maybe not crazy sharp as some other ones, but I have to say in terms of quality, it is quite solid, but it's not amazing. So the one thing that I want to point out is if we go into the settings, go into display, we still have the color and contrast mode. So you could set it to warm, you could set it to cold, but I would wish for a little bit more granularity here because you can't set anything between. So minor thing, but it's least cool to have that as well. We have automatic contrast, we have increased if you want it even more so extreme or standard if you want it more natural. Personally, I liked automatic contrast, so all is good here. Now in terms of quality, what did I mean by that? Because first of all, I have to say the viewing angles are absolutely stable here, no problems, but there is something a little bit about this display. Once you are below 40%, it seemed a little bit dull. Once you have used 40%, which is maybe a little bit brighter than I usually use, then it's a really great display indoors, really great white point, great blacks, and the colors absolutely nicely. A little bit saturated, but still natural and very pleasing. Sunlight readability is though a little bit of a mixed bag because what it does then is boost the contrast extremely and then gray gets almost white, which definitely helps sunlight readability and makes it good. But I just don't like that kind of way because just make the display a little bit brighter, just out of a little bit better quality and you wouldn't need to use that kind of trick. But other than that, it still is a very pleasant display, very good, nothing else to add here. Now about the speaker, let me start that. Sorry, I'm not impressed. And this is actually one of the bigger weaknesses already here because the maximum volume on its own is already good enough. Usually I heard everything I wanted to loud enough, but the sound is so cold and thin, a little bit on the weaker side with the highs being pretty much the only thing that you hear. There is pretty much no bass at all. The mids are okay, but the overall sound experience was quite disappointing. Similar but not quite that bad is the headphone jack because even though we have settings in the options to select a certain type of Xiaomi headphones, we have the equalizer and so on, it is still just about an average sound, not really louder than anything else and the sound is nothing particularly great. It's cool that we have the equalizer, but I would actually wish for a better chip or at least something that is a little bit more boosted where we have a little bit more volume. And I will complain about this on this phone as well as on any other phone that sounds pretty much the same. This is the weakest point of 2016. I want more here for next year, but I can't really blame it to this because anyone else does the same. So yeah, let's talk about the performance now. Let me off all the apps and we have the four gigabyte version here as you can see. So let's start a few apps so we can see how quickly those launch. And as you can see, it is definitely very fast. So it's definitely a snappy device and I like that. 
absolutely fast, absolutely no problems. And what I like, and you will see this as well, is how great this is because this is a legit flagship device. Yes, of course, since we have the Snapdragon 821, this was to be expected, but I had a little bit of my doubts with the MIUI maybe being a little bit of a performance issue, which is not the case. Since it is an IPS LCD display though, it just doesn't feel as smooth as for an sample an AMOLED. Those just have seemingly higher refresh rates, which makes actually quite a big difference. So this display provides the smoothness as it can just compared to an AMOLED. And here it is brilliant because there is pretty much no lag at all. It is super responsive. If I try to use my gestures, they would work if they will work because this is actually one thing that I have to actually point out because usually I can swipe in here and I have my, my gestures. But as you can see here, if the app is already launched, it works. But if the app isn't, which pretty much is just the case here, so many times they just don't start. So you have to go on the home screen first to start those apps. This is a little bit of an annoyance, a personal one for me but usually apps all start, that is not a problem. So that's just a subjective minor personal thing. But other than that, even with the four gigabytes of RAM, multitasking works out quite nice. As you can see here, it doesn't really have to reload. Usually it works out just fine. So it is a great performer overall, absolutely no complaints here. It is on a flagship level, not quite as good as maybe as the Pixel, but very, very close to that. And the same absolutely goes also for our games because we have quite high solid refresh rates. I could play all games with really nice frame rates with pretty much no frame drops at all, which is very nice to see. And the device healed up actually quite nicely because the S821 seems to be quite efficient, even more so than the 820. And I could play all the games without any noticeable reducing of performance which is absolutely great to see my bluetooth controller also worked absolutely flawlessly so i could also play shooters way better than with just the display and i just have to say that the overall performance is absolutely top-notch flagship absolutely no discussion here absolutely solid reliable absolutely top in that regard nothing else to add here and the next thing that is very nice to see is the battery life because as you can see a full charge takes one hour and 30 for some reason i forgot the percentage at the end for 100 percent which is definitely fast quick charge did work absolutely no problem 10 percent for 60 minutes of youtube is also very respectable absolutely great now about the battery life one day as you can see your data only four to four and a half mixed use five five and a half and six to six and a half on wi-fi only why is there this kind of difference between half of an hour because if we use it for two days it's like one hour less the thing is just because of the standby drain, which wasn't quite as reliable all the times, because sometimes it was like slightly over half a percent an hour and sometimes this was noticeably better, which is a little bit more consistent on some phones because a little bit more than half a percent per hour on Wi-Fi only is actually a little bit more than usually. So this could be improved, but still is great. Absolutely no complaints here at all. Now where I have some minor complaints is the, um, the design itself, not the UI, MIUI, because as you can see here, a few people don't like this kind of recent apps. I personally like it. It's absolutely no problem for me. And as you can see here, I'm using the stock launcher, which doesn't have an app tray. Of course you could use Nova launcher. And as you can also see here, I'm using a theme. And I personally think with this one, for example, the system looks very nice, elegant, and stylish as you can see here. The quick settings, for some reason, not expandable. So you will have to scroll, which feels a little bit dated to me. Of course, we have the date here. And if you go into those settings, as you can see here, everything is themed as well. And in terms of settings, we have definitely some nice ones because we have, for example, the quick ball, which is kind of something hovering where you have some extra options, something that I really wouldn't use though. We have 3D touch, which I also don't think is really all that useful because it's just not used all that well. Notification color, as you can see here, can be changed for calls, messaging and notifications. So there is quite some customizability here. After all, if we go out of that, we have, of course, do not disturb mode, battery mode performance. You have some extra options. Of course, you can rearrange the toggles. You can set some more things, the carrier name. This is pretty standard cost for MIUI, but it's definitely offering everything you would want to see in a quite fashionable way. Of course, there is a lot of bloat. And since it is MIUI and not always, this is just out of the box software that I got 8.0 from MIUI. It has a few quirks still left, but it's not the biggest problem. So you can quite easily install the Play Store. Of course, updates will come quite frequently just in terms of bug fixes. But once we or when we will see Nougat is something for a little bit of a different discussion because that could actually take up quite some while. So that's why I would say let's check the camera here. And yep, this is not right. <laughs> Give me a second. What happened here? Ah. <laughs> 
let me switch to the other screen okay now we would be right okay sorry for this little bit okay what do i have to say about the quality for just a four megapixel camera i have to say the selfies are actually really really nice and detailed very sharp with great exposure and color accuracy so i definitely have to give it to that i would have wished to see that kind of a selfie experience as you can see here even indoors on the samsung galaxy s7 so whatever they squeezed out of the 4 megapixel camera kudos to that now low light with the flash looks absolutely nice detailed sharp without a little bit more blurry but no grain and still maintains to look quite natural as you can see here absolutely okay so even the low light shots are actually really good Air sharp autofocus worked well shutter times worked well absolutely enough to complain you're really good one so let's get quickly through this because don't want to waste too much time as you can see here outdoor shots actually can provide a nice amount of details here autofocus usually worked reliable and the overall experience which is something that is just more important for me than the actual quality is absolutely reliable as you can see here great pictures they look natural and it's easy to snap all those pictures because you usually don't have a high fail rate for bad pictures or something like that so i have to give it to that maybe not the most impressive shots of all the ones that i've seen but as a quick snap those are actually as you can see here absolutely more than satisfying and in my opinion it's a very good camera after all maybe not quite the very best flagship cameras out there but definitely for the money you pay for in this price range absolutely more than solid and for what you pay for you get a really good camera experience after all and the same actually goes also for the video if we check that just real quick of course there is some noticeable artifacting going on if we use 4k this is just a habit of a lot of phones maybe if you go down to 1080 it will be less noticeable if you actually to see here direct sunlight and exposure seems absolutely nice the balance in terms of let's turn the sound off and as you can see here autofocus works actually very smooth it's very fast and you usually don't see any sort of transition which is definitely absolutely nice yes shake, uh, the shaky footage is there doesn't really seem to have any kind of optic limit stabilization but yeah not a real problem for me it could be for some else but as you can see here the autofocus works super nice and reliable really great of course it won't be able to make this proper in focus but no other cam at the at this point did because it's just a, too small of an object but i definitely like what i see here smooth and very high quality video the only thing to mention like i said already is a little bit of artifacting and something's going on but nothing really big of a problem and i really like how great the actual details are of the video and the autofocus that works really really great so yeah let's just move along and i actually have no idea why it was on a different monitor but i would say let's just go to the pros and cons to keep it short top-notch quality this feels like you could easily expect 700 of a price point but it's like half of it so highly respectable super narrow and thin design with a killer in hand feel i just have to say along with maybe the huawei nova which is a little bit of more of a mid-ranger this is one of it's definitely amongst the very best flagship phones in terms of inner feel because yes the s7 feels great but it feels almost extremely chunky compared to the mi 5 great display indoors like i said outdoors i didn't like the effect so much because of this contrast boost legit flagship performance absolutely no nothing to come yeah <laughs> nothing to complain about here great battery life software can look sleek i've showed this personally at least i think with the theme it looked very nice very good camera overall no discussion and the value definitely now let's talk about the negative sides yes there are a few but a lot of subjective ones and minor things so fingerprint reader is meh as you have seen it actually is better than i make it seem but in normal use it just didn't impress me so much especially once you have maybe used the one on the lenovo p2 which is bah, mind boggling good dull display on low brightness no problem i personally use 40 percent and it was really great then over sharpening and contrast boost what i noticed sometimes that the display tended to slightly over sharpen a few of the objects on the screen and the contrast boost not a big problem but yeah it's there thin and cold speaker that was actually quite disappointing along with the average headphone sound something you will have to get used to miui software crooks and bloat i've talked about this nothing really add to add here smart test launcher works flaky so 
especially if you kill off all the apps, sometimes it just can't launch from the launcher itself, those apps, and you have to go on the home screen. Once it is loaded, then it works. Not quite sure what's up there. With an update, it could work. Or I don't know what was wrong, but who uses this app besides me, it seems. No SD card slot, but I don't see this as a problem. That's why it's in brackets. With 64 or even 128, I am completely satisfied. And no band 20, which is more of a problem for the people living in Germany. So let's get to the conclusion here. Is this a good phone for about $300, $350? I would personally say it absolutely is. Hardware, absolutely flawless on a very high level. Besides the speaker, as I said, the rest of battery life, performance, display, everything is great. It's maybe the only thing that you have to point out is the software. If you are okay with MIUI or if some proper, really good custom ROMs come out, which I only saw for right for now on the Mi 5, then the experience could be way better because there are, after all, some things with a lot of Chinese bloat here installed, which you could get away with installing the European version. And then this phone is even way better. But even now, with just the current version that I have here, which is a lot of Chinese that you can get out of the way after all, it delivers a performance and a normal user software experience is absolutely satisfying. This is the only thing. The rest... And if you fix that, it will be even better. And it definitely can hold up with an S7 without any problems. It's not always on the same high quality standard, especially in terms of the display, maybe in terms of the sound. But if that is not all that important for you, you still get an absolutely great phone. And after all, you pay a lot less, <laughs> something I just can't deny. And once again, you could actually check tradingshenzen.com. And a few people in the comments asked me if this shop is legit. All I can say is... If it wouldn't be legit, I wouldn't take review units from them because the actual contact is super nice between me and them. So <laughs> nothing else to say here. Otherwise, you could leave it a thumbs up, leave a subscription, questions and comments down there below. And the most important part, enjoy the day. <laughs> Until next time, bye.